Water. And g'day viewers, I'm Michael. And I'm Janet. And welcome to this week's episode, brought to you by the letter Q, where we dive into the four quotient factor for a great life. So what are these four quotients? They are IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. And we'll explore each one in detail and discuss how having a balance of this foursome makes for a happy and joy-filled life. So if you're ready to get all your four Qs into balance, listen up. Water. And g'day, I'm Michael. And I'm Janet, and welcome to today's podcast. We will be talking about the four quotient factor. And what are these four quotients? They are IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. Today we'll be exploring each of these factors, how they're different from each other, and the roles that they play for success and joy in life. Let's start with one we know well, IQ. IQ, or the intelligence quotient, is a measure of a person's cognitive abilities, including things like problem solving, logical reasoning, and abstract thinking. It's a standardized test that's been used for such a long time to assess a person's intellectual abilities. So IQ is often considered the traditional measure of intelligence, and it's generally accepted that individuals with higher IQs tend to have better cognitive abilities and perform better academically. However, what we know is that having a high IQ doesn't necessarily guarantee success in life. So while IQ may be a strong predictor of academic success, it doesn't always translate to success in other areas of life, such as personal relationships or career advancement. There are several reasons for this. Firstly, IQ only measures a narrow range of cognitive abilities, focusing on areas like problem solving and logical reasoning. Other important aspects of intelligence, such as the other three that we are discussing today, emotional intelligence, social intelligence, and adversity intelligence, are not captured by these IQ tests. Secondly, IQ is only one factor in success. Other factors, such as personality traits, motivation, and work ethic, play important roles in determining a person's success and joy in life. Someone with a high IQ may not necessarily have the motivation or work ethic to achieve their goals, while someone with a lower IQ may have strengths that allow them to succeed in different ways. Finally, IQ is not always an accurate measure of a person's true abilities. IQ tests can be influenced by a variety of factors, such as test anxiety. And I can think of loads of examples of people that I've known through my life who are super smart but they fall apart at exam time due to the stress. It's a bit like those golfers, you know, the pro golfers who just shoot amazing scores and have a really low handicap when they're, when they're just when out no pressure, playing, yeah. when there's no pressure, but you put them in a tournament and they fall apart. And there's been so many stories of that. And there's also cultural bias and environmental factors. So additionally, some people may have strengths and abilities that are not captured by IQ tests, such as artistic or athletic abilities. So while IQ is certainly an important aspect of intelligence, it's not the only one, and it should not be used as the sole measure of a person's potential for happiness and success in life. Instead, a much more holistic approach to intelligence, one that incorporates EQ, SQ, and AQ, can provide a more accurate and comprehensive understanding of a person's abilities and potential for happiness and success. Okay, let's talk about EQ now, or the emotional quotient. EQ is the measure of a person's emotional intelligence. It refers to a person's ability to understand and manage their own emotions as well as those of others. EQ includes several important components, such as empathy, social awareness, and relationship management. Unlike IQ, which is largely innate and difficult to change, although science is on the fence about whether Mm. you can raise your IQ or not, Research does suggest that it's possible to raise your intelligence using certain brain training activities, working on exercises to train memory, executive control, and visuospatial reasoning, including the thinking needs needed for movement, depth, distance perception, and spatial navigation. That's the one I'd need to develop if I was ever to to drive a truck, just the girl who drives a tiny car. All these things can help develop IQ and boost your intelligent levels whereas EQ can be developed and improved over time through practice and self-reflection. 
Developing emotional intelligence can lead to a better understanding of yourself and others, which can improve personal and professional relationships and increase your overall well-being. One way to think about the difference between IQ and EQ is that IQ is kind of like the engine of your car, while EQ is like the driver. So a high IQ might give you a really powerful, sporty engine, but without the skilled driver to navigate the road ahead, you might not get very far. Similarly, the person with a high IQ may have strong cognitive abilities, but without emotional intelligence, they may struggle to navigate complex social situations and build meaningful relationships. So I had an uncle who was a great example to draw on here. He was super smart, highly intelligent, and particularly in maths and sciences. So while he possessed a really high IQ, his low EQ and SQ negatively impacted his life. So despite his intelligence, he struggled to connect with others and build social relationships due to his lack of social skills and intolerance of differing beliefs and values. This led him, sadly, to living a fairly solitary and unsatisfying life, highlighting the importance of not only intellectual abilities, but also emotional and social intelligence. Research has shown that emotional intelligence is a key factor in personal and professional success and happiness. People with high EQ are able to navigate social situations, manage conflict and build stronger relationships. In the workplace, emotional intelligence is becoming increasingly important as organisations recognise the value of employees who can effectively communicate, collaborate and vitally adapt Mm. to change. Developing emotional intelligence can involve several strategies of which we at Chrysalis are advocates of and we assist many clients with. Areas such as mindfulness meditation, self-reflection and communication skills training. Mindfulness meditation, for example, has been shown to improve emotional regulation and reduce stress, which can lead to a greater sense of well-being and stronger relationships. Self-reflection can help individuals better understand their own emotions and how they impact others, which can improve empathy and relationship management skills. Communication skills training helps individuals develop better listening skills, express their emotions more effectively and build stronger and more lasting relationships with others. EQ is a crucial aspect of intelligence that can be developed and improved over time. Developing your emotional intelligence leads to a greater and happier life. So in addition to IQ and EQ, the third important aspect of intelligence is SQ or the social quotient. Now SQ refers to a person's ability to build and maintain social relationships over time. SQ includes several important components such as networking, communication skills and the ability to work effectively in groups. Research has shown that individuals with a high SQ are more likely to be happier and successful in their personal and professional lives. In the workplace, for example, networking and collaboration are really key factors in building a successful career. And similarly, in personal relationships, the ability to communicate effectively and build strong relationships with others is essential for maintaining healthy and fulfilling connections. So unlike IQ and EQ, which are largely internal and individual traits, SQ is highly influenced by external factors, such as the environment and your your upbringing. So for example, growing up in a supportive and nurturing environment may help you develop really strong social skills, while growing up in a more isolated or challenged environment may hinder social development. If you struggle with SQ, why not try joining a small group interested in something you like doing? I recommend, if you're socially awkward, joining a local theatre group, as they are thriving with fun and interesting people. And although you may not be ready to take the stage, there are many backstage roles where you can meet Mm. and connect with others. Good point. There are many groups around, not just theatre groups, but there are groups that you can become involved in that will help you hone your social skills. There are lots of groups online. There are coffee catch-ups. There are walks. Just, Just reach out and you can start developing your SQ. Like EQ, SQ can be improved through practice and intentional effort, and even if you're naturally introverted. 
Developing social skills may involve various strategies that Janet's just talked about there, you know, and things like practicing active listening, seeking out networking opportunities, and building strong connections with others. It may not be easy for you, but you can develop it with practice. And the more you step outside your comfort zone, the easier it becomes. So developing your SQ can lead to greater happiness and success in your personal and professional relationships and improve your overall well-being. So to complete our four quotients, we're going to discuss the really important aspect of AQ or adversity quotient. AQ is the measure of a person's ability to handle adversity and overcome challenges. This includes things like resilience, grit, and the ability to bounce back from setbacks. And we know in life that adversity is inevitable. Just like the roller coaster analogy mm-hmm. we discussed in a previous podcast, everyone experiences setbacks, failures, and challenges at some point. What sets successful people apart from those who struggle is their ability to bounce back from these setbacks mm-hmm. and use them as opportunities for growth. Yeah, you bet. And folks, that takes practice. So every time you hit a wall of adversity, just keep going, keep going. Pause, get your breath and get back up again. Research has shown that individuals with a high AQ are better equipped to handle difficult situations, maintain a positive outlook and find creative solutions to problems. AQ is often considered the most important type of intelligence because it is the one that determines how well a person is able to cope with and thrive in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. While some people may be naturally more resilient than others, AQ, like the other muscles, can be developed and improved through intentional effort and practice. Developing AQ involves several key strategies – such as cultivating a growth mindset, building a support system and practicing self-care. And also, if you need professional help, please go and see your GP. They'll put you in contact with a professional psychologist to give you some strategies to help you build your adversity muscle. And so, you know, Janet mentioned some strategies such as cultivating a growth mindset which involves seeing challenges as opportunities for growth and learning rather than as setbacks or failures. This mindset can help individuals approach difficult situations with such a positive outlook and a willingness to learn from your mistakes. You can also build a support system that may involve seeking out supportive friends, family members, or as Janet said, you know, joining some support groups or working with a therapist. Having a strong support system can provide you with the encouragement and resources you need to overcome challenges and build resilience. And practicing self-care is really important. This involves taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. It may be getting more sleep, eating a healthy diet, engaging in regular exercise, practicing stress management techniques such as mindfulness or meditation. So by developing your AQ, you can become better equipped to handle difficult situations, maintain a positive outlook, and find creative solutions to the problems. So why are these four types of intelligence so important? And how do they relate to one another? Let's look at a few examples to explain. Imagine two people, both of whom have high IQs. One of them has a low EQ and struggles to connect with others, while the other has a high EQ and is able to build strong relationships and work effectively in teams. While both of these people may be intellectually gifted, it is likely the one with the higher EQ will be more successful in life as they'll be able to leverage their skills and build a supportive network. Similarly, imagine two people who are both highly socially adept and have strong networks of friends and colleagues. One of them has a low AQ and gives up easily when faced with challenges, while the other has a high AQ and is able to persevere through even the toughest of times. While both of these people may be well connected, it is likely that the one with the higher AQ will have a happier life as they'll be better equipped to navigate the ups and downs of both their personal and professional lives. So, while having a high IQ is one thing, and we probably overplay it, it is not the only type of intelligence that contributes to happiness and success in life. We need a good mixture of EQ, SQ, AQ and IQ. And having a high EQ can help you connect with others and work effectively in teams, while having a high SQ can help you build and maintain social relationships. 
However, as we've just covered, it's the AQ that determines how well we handle adversity and overcome challenges, which is a critical factor in achieving fulfillment, happiness and success. So going back to my uncle's story, it serves as a reminder that IQ and intellectual abilities alone are just not enough for that happiness and success in life. Building emotional and social intelligence, as well as resilience, will make an enormous difference in your ability to connect with others, navigate challenges and achieve personal and professional goals. Ultimately, strive to have a balance of all four types of intelligence. It'll help you thrive in both your personal and professional lives. And when you put them all together, that's what we call your LQ, your life quotient. Until next time, love and blessings. See ya.